Hello, and welcome to the Bible blog at MrKent.com. I am Mr. Kent, and uh, we are going to look at Genesis chapter 3 today. So if you have a Bible, you might want to grab it and open it up to Genesis chapter 3, or there's a link to the right of this video to the BibleGateway.com, and I'm using the New King James Version, so you can go there and pick that version and follow along word, word for word. Uh, when I put something up on the screen, I take that from the King James Version, which is not copyrighted, and so then I don't have to deal with all the copyright laws involved with the YouTube video and all that stuff. So, uh, so here we go. We're going to take a look at Genesis chapter three. And if you remember at the end of Gen, if you uh, last watched the last video, at the end of Genesis chapter two, God had just created woman and given her to man. And so now we're going to see what happens next. Okay. So verse one of chapter three. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now the devil, when he comes to uh, to us, okay, he's going to make us wonder. He's going he's to cause us to doubt by asking us questions. Now, maybe it won't be a question that you hear the devil ask, but something's going to happen that is going to cause you to have a doubt about whatever it is you're doing, which is right. Um, and he asks, he asks this question. And uh, in Matthew, uh, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 11, where Jesus was tempted, Let's take a look at that. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. So when he asked, uh, when he talked to the woman, he said, has, uh, uh, he says, have God indeed said you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? Both cases talking about food here. OK, what do we do with food? We feed the flesh. <laughs> so and in both cases, he asks a question. He says, if you if you are the son of God. OK, so then Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so uh, uh, Jesus answered with scripture, which is always a good thing. You can just remember to quote scripture when the devil is tempting you or when the flesh is tempting you or whenever you're tempted by anything. So uh, then the devil, verse five, took him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, once again, here comes the question. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And of course, he's taken that uh, not necessarily out of context, but uh, uh, in, in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So once again, uh, Jesus uh, answers scripture with scripture. And but he's he's asked another question. Then we go to verse eight. And the devil took him up on an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Now, here's the thing where the, he's, he's not he's not giving him a question. But the, the main goal of the uh, of the serpent is to be worshipped. Satan wants to be worshipped. And so he's 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 tempting Jesus with with that. And Jesus then said, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. And in another version, it says Get, devil left him for a season because he will come back in uh, in a few years, three years or so. But uh, but the devil is more cunning than any creature any beast of the field and i can guarantee you he's more cunning than you and me but anytime you're you're caused to be doubt about something that you're doing right um that's the time to to consider maybe i'm being tempted by the same individual that tempted eve in the garden and the woman said to the serpent verse 2 of uh, genesis chapter 3 the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall 
not eat of it you shall not you shall not eat nor shall you touch it lest you die so um, uh, she kind of added a little bit in there because you could touch it because he had to dress the garden okay so then the serpent then the serpent said to the woman you will not surely die which was a lie and he knew it was a lie he's the father of all lies as jesus said he says you will not die for god knows that in the day that you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil you see before they uh, transgress god's commandment um they didn't know the difference between good and evil because everything was good okay and the thing is is um we all um, we that is including eve we all want to be our own god down deep inside that's our flesh nature and so rather than doing what god says we want to make our own decisions and we have the ability to make choices and uh, so thinking that she wanted to be her her own god so verse six when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes oh oh and the tree was desirable to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate she also gave to her husband uh, with her and he ate so now we have a problem here because uh her desire she saw with her eyes and she tasted it and also she she knew she knew it would make her wise and um that's one thing if it's a it's a flesh nature uh to want to be you know above other people and so uh, if you know if if i'm smarter than you that makes me feel really good so anyway so she gave it to her husband and he ate in verse seven then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings so the first thing that they did was they they noticed that they were naked flesh <laughs> and and uh, i often joke about the fact that i wonder if if uh, if adam knew that sooner or later those fig leaves would dry up and fall off and that's why they use fig leaves but uh, we won't go there okay verse eight and they heard the sound of the lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden now i'm going to keep reading then the lord called to adam and said to him where are you so he said i heard your voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself so that's the end of verse 10 now so they heard the sound of the lord walking in the garden okay and then adam says i heard your voice well that tells me that i'm guessing that our god when he walks when he's <laughs> walking in the garden um you know there's a lot of music in heaven and i imagine he was humming or singing or whistling but uh, whatever he was doing <clears throat> uh, adam heard his voice and uh because it says they heard the sound of the lord walking in the garden in verse 8 and then in um verse 11 or verse 10 he says i heard your voice so i'm just guessing but uh they 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 were hiding now whereas before they didn't have to hide and it's just like a little kid uh when they do something wrong they they try to hide it you know and i when i teach my sunday school classes i always tell the little kids you know you look to your left you look to your right to make sure nobody's watching but then you forget to look up <laughs> so anyway they were hiding and uh we'll go to verse 11 now so God said, who told you that you were naked? <clears throat> Have you eaten of the tree of life, which I commanded you that you should not eat? So God knows everything already. And he says, you haven't done that, have you? <laughs> no, you know, it's what do they call it kind of a question. That is, anyway, uh, it, uh, he knew what they had done because he was watching. Then the man said, the woman you gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate so he's blaming the wife and verse 13 then the Lord God said to the woman what is this you have done and the woman said the serpent deceived me and I ate so she she's making her excuse okay and so uh, we'll get back to that in a minute but so verse 14 the Lord God said to the serpent 
because he was there too, right with him, you know. He said, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Um, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now, let's go back and look what God said here. Um, he, uh, he, he said, uh, uh, Adam, to the, then the man said, in verse 12, I'm sorry, the woman you gave me, uh, gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And then she made her excuse. Both of them had a really good excuse. I mean, it's a really good excuse because it all started with Satan. It all started with the serpent. So they had really good excuses. The only problem is, think about it. What if Adam and Eve would have gotten on their knees and asked God to forgive them? It doesn't happen here. They don't ask for forgiveness. And God from Genesis to Revelation is a God of forgiveness. Uh, he is a God who is willing to forgive no matter what we've done. You might say, well, I don't see how you could ever forgive me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't see how you could forgive me either. Uh, maybe we should compare sins or something. But uh, really, honestly, God is a God of forgiveness. But here in the Garden of Eden, right face to face with God, they forgot to ask forgiveness. Have you ever done that? I've done it. But it sure would have changed the world if they would have said, God, please forgive me, because I'm sure he would have. And because it wasn't their fault. The devil did it. The devil uh, started the whole thing. So they had the really good excuses, but they should have just asked forgiveness. And next time, <laughs> next time you're tempted to make an excuse, remember this story. Because God's looking for repentance. He's looking for a genuine uh, uh, heart that uh, is sorry for what you've done. and ask forgiveness because he will always forgive you okay verse 16 so he he told the devil that he's going to be on his uh, on his belly from now on and also he said uh, he said uh, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel and this is uh, 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 talking about uh, in the end Jesus is going to win but in the meantime uh, he's going to bruise bruise the heel of of uh, of our God and his people Verse 16, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your concept uh, and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Now, guys, <laughs> don't jump on that one <laughs> because Jesus kind of changed those things. Now, all the way through the, re the, new, the Old Testament, men ruled over the women. But when Jesus uh, uh, died on the cross, and the things that he said, um, we are supposed to love our wives. And uh, that's pretty easy to do. I say that kiddingly. But anyway, uh, all they have to do is honor and obey. <laughs> that should be pretty easy to do. <laughs> anyway, verse 17. Then to Adam he said, because you have needed, or heeded, I'm sorry, the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. <clears throat> Cursed is the ground. Remember those words. <clears throat> Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the, to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Now, when God said, You shall surely die, two things it's physical and it's spiritual think of it if if uh, if they had not eaten that uh, uh, out of the tree of good of uh, knowledge of good and evil um, they would have lived forever physically but they broke that they broke that uh, that rule they transgressed and so then they were not able to live forever plus they broke their they, they died spiritually now, don't you suppose that God loved Adam and Eve? But we have a just God. And uh, even though he provides for us and loves us and everything, he also uh, is God. 
Now, we're going to go on here because i got something really cool I want to explain to you here. But we're going to go to verse 20. And Adam called his, his, his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also, Adam and his wife, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. So this is where I say God invented leather jackets because he made them, he made them some clothing out of leather, knowing Adam's little tricky thoughts. Okay, verse 22, then God said, then the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. And there's a dash there. And I don't know if there's a dash there because God stopped and thought and wished that we had lived forever or what the dash is for. Verse 23. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life and that's the end of verse 4 now it says he had to till the ground from which he was taken so he was taken from the ground and see God put him in the garden and God took him out of the garden right took him back to the same place so now he had to really work because God made the trees to grow in the garden but now he has to work to make the trees grow so Here's the thing. Cursed is the ground. There's a very important, uh, interesting thing that, uh, it, that you see, uh, in verse, yeah, in verse uh, 17, it says, Cursed is the ground for your sake. When I was teaching at Pasco High School in Pasco, Washington, I, had, uh, I was an industrial arts teacher, and in my classes, I would show film every couple of weeks that had something to do with what we were studying. And this was back in the time when they were sending men to the moon and bringing back samples of moon dust. Okay. And one of the films was an example of how uh, they took the moon dust and they put it into, they, 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 they made two big containers and grew plants in them. One was just a normal container and the other one they, they, they fertilized the ground. They just fertilized it with, with moon dust. And then they planted and they watched. The plants in the regular in the regular container, they grew normally, but the plants and this is this is a NASA film which I can't get anymore. I can't find it, but I've got some stuff on my website which I'll show you or I'll tell you about here. But anyway, there they the one with the moon dust, the plants grew so fast and rapid and all the fruit of all the plants was much better than 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 ever because of the moon dust so uh, they, they couldn't figure it out so then they put insects into both uh, containers into both little they were like small rooms the insects in the regular uh, container ate the plants and killed them the insects in the moon dust container died and the plants kept going now that's for real and uh, I've got a link and I'll put it on the on the video here a link to my website where you can look at a film the only one I can find that has anything to do with that it's kind of long and boring but uh, but but stick it out and you'll hear it uh, what they're saying but they, the thing is is I was sitting in the back of the class watching this film and Christopher Kraft was the uh, the head guy at NASA back then and uh, he was saying we have no explanation for this and I'm sitting there jumping up and down in my seat I know I know what it is <laughs> so anyway it was fun well that's enough for today and I want to thank you very much for listening and uh, watching the videos. And I pray that if you, uh, if you uh, 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 don't have a, uh, a relationship with the Lord, I pray that you'll uh, think about it and give him a chance to, uh, to speak to your heart and hopefully uh, trust him as your Lord and Savior. Thank you for listening and God bless you.